Welcome to Pine Thicket Philosophies, the non-podcast podcast where we do everything the podcast experts tell you not to do. If you are looking for a finely polished and professional podcast crew, well folks, we ain't in. But if you want to virtually join a group of old outdoorsmen from Southern Appalachia as we sit around the fire and talk about any one of our favorite topics, well pour a cup of coffee, pull up a chair, and enjoy. All right, so we are on the banks of the river, packed up for the last morning of the three-day trip tonight. Um, beautiful river here in North Alabama, right outside of Huntsville. Um, the Flint River is always a beautiful river, but this time of the year, it really shines, doesn't it? Really shines. Really shines. Okay. Oh, I hear a car Really shines. It's not cloudy. Yes. <laughs> we have had, I guess first, let's talk about the trip. We started as far upstream as we can find public access to that's paddleable, and we're going down. How many miles are we covering? Uh, 22. 22 miles. Um, We did about eight miles the first day, um, eight miles yesterday, and then we're going on out to the trucks today. So, um, Four-ish. Yeah. It's been... uh, um, Weather-wise, anything to complain about? Uh, extremes, maybe. <laughs> it it no. has been a little cool this morning, a little hot during the day, but not near as hot as we've been here before. Mm. And both nights at bedtime, we got run under our rain flies by rain, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Well, you know, when you're an old man, you... You tend to go to bed a little earlier, yeah. and that, that gives us an excuse. <laughs> yep. Yeah, about 8 or 9 o'clock both nights, we were we were run to bed, which is pretty good. But with us on this trip is, of course, myself, then Glendon, JR, and Josh. And I don't know why I'm pointing, because y'all can't see me point through the, <laughs> through the audio. Um, I do that on You have to listen really hard. It's just the point of it. Just the point of it, exactly. So we'll start over here with Glendon, and we'll ask him, what's your highlights of the trip? Well, I think for me, number one's been the river and not knowing what to expect around the next bend, uh, the little rapids we've come across, the, the times we've had to get out of the canoe and drag. Uh, it hasn't been terrible. Uh, you know, there, there's, there's shallow water here and there, but we haven't had to drag too much. Yep, the water level, about two more inches would have been perfect in most places, mm-hmm. wouldn't you agree? But we have been here when it's much lower, and we've been here when it's much higher. <laughs> uh, understatement of the year. Yeah. So what about the worst part of the trip so far? Not much to complain about. Um, maybe the heat during the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Uh, got a little hot uh, when the sun was out without any you know without any cloud cover that's probably that's probably it uh the the storms that come through i mean that didn't really bother us too much we had shelter and Mm -hmm. uh, it it didn't get too bad no it was really bad just before it got to us and then just as it got to us it just kind of died out it was was, i mean we had some we had some rain but no no lightning and then i think another highlight i think for all of us has been the food Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. That was that was going to be my highlight. So my mm. highlight is is typically always the food because I'm a I'm a bit of a foodie. Um, I kind of like to eat a little bit. Um, that's a that's a struggle for me actually. Um, and and Jr. delivered. I will have an Instagram post with nothing but the food from this trip at some point. Um, the other highlight for me, the water really was just about perfect because it seemed like nearly every time that we had to get out and drag was about the time that my body was saying hey you need to get up and walk anyway um and then like yesterday we pulled up here at 126 is that right yeah um and so we were off the water for the main part of the heat of the day yesterday and we're getting to sit around in the shade and just talk and and uh, stuff so that was pretty nice low point um, 
so far I don't I don't have anything to complain about um, I really don't have anything to complain about so all right what about you JR highlight highlight well one had to be <clears throat> Josh's maneuverability in a that extra long boat uh, <laughs> when he was going to get out of his boat and drag around an obstacle and some rapids and his boat had other ideas and it turned him around into the danger zone and we're all you know waiting our turn at the danger zone and he pulls some next level olympic style paddling and and he he done it uh, most everybody else would have bailed i think <laughs> but he hung in there and actually turned it around and it, you know did, we should have all just applauded yeah. did, did a complete 360 in the rapid which was uh, under a under a strainer which was was, was mighty impressive i, I said that it we're going to call it skill luck, combination of skill and luck. Because if you hadn't had some skill, you never could have pulled that off. If you hadn't had some luck, you never could have pulled that off. <laughs> and so. as far as bailing, there was no time. <laughs> there, really, there really wasn't. It was it, like commit or go under. <laughs> yeah. And we was all just holding our breath, thinking we're going to have to pick up his camping gear yeah, all I thought the way he was down going under. Stream. I thought that strainer was going to get him. But he, he did. He pulled that off. Now that was that was one of the high points. Of course, just getting to go. And you're right. Most of the time, when uh, we needed to get out of the boat, we needed to get out of the boat. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> that uh, the rear can only take so much. I mean, I got a really good padded seat uh, and had a pad on top of it, and so you know it was comfortable. <coughs> but if you sit with your legs bent long enough, mm -hmm. you got to straighten them out. So. When, you, when you're an old man, you, you got to do that. As far as the low point is concerned, I uh, had two. One, it was too cold for the clothes I had. Last night wasn't so bad because I put on all my clothes. Uh, so it wasn't too bad. But during the rain, I had a drip. Uh, and I timed it. And it was dripping about every 34 seconds. Uh, <laughs> And it would hit right at my face and hit the crossbar and splatter. Uh, and and I was thinking, maybe this rain will quit. And now I'm thinking, maybe I can do something else. And I wound up taking a shirt and laying it across the top to absorb the drip. And thank goodness it did quit. Uh, and I'm like, well, I've got to seal that rain fly. But the last time that we had rain and I was under that same rain fly, uh, it was, instead of dripping in my face, it was dripping on my crotch. So both of them are bad. <laughs> so definitely when I get home and get the thing dried out, I'm going to put a major sealant on that thing because it, it, it's going to need it. it. It takes a little abuse uh, here and there. Just, just, just a little. And plus, you know, it, it's homemade, and I made it back when I was just learning to sew. So I mean, it's, uh, it's not it's not the prettiest, but it's functional, and that's good enough. Yeah. What about you, Josh? Highlight? Uh, well, one highlight is the company. Another's the food. The water on the river is about perfect. Just hanging out and enjoying the sounds of nature. And you know, you hear a car every now and then when you get close to the road, but for the most part, it ain't bad. And uh, just uh, what JR was talking about, the, the Olympic maneuver, <laughs> that was uh, pretty exciting. I imagine that got the adrenaline going. And then just to uh, just paddle on through the thing and not have to worry about it, it was pretty good. But, uh, and I guess probably my low point, it's going to have to be my ground sheet. I had it just a little bit out from under my tarp last night. So what little rain we did get dripped on it. And it was hanging out on the high side, so it ran down. When I got up this morning, I realized my whole rear end was wet where my hammock and stuff just touched the ground. So I absorbed a lot of the water. 
<laughs> so I had a cold rear end when I got up. But I never really got cold until I got up. That's probably the lowest point. Now, uh, we had wildlife. Yes. Uh, I yeah. commented after our first night that it was surprising with all the beaver sign around that we didn't have a beaver splashing the water, you know, half the night and keeping us awake because they yep. they are bad to do that. And we didn't we didn't have it. There's hardly any beaver sign here, but we had a beaver. They was splashing. And it was splashing. We had beaver. I had got up this morning to fresh deer tracks after the rain. And they were they were very fresh, uh, within five five yards of my hammock. And I had heard it walking around during the night, but I thought it was one of these goofballs, and I kept laying there thinking, why are they walking around my boat? Um, but, you know, it just it went on and came on back up this way. Um, we also, I got woke up, I think me and JR was the only ones that heard it, but got woke up to a really strange gaggle of noises, and I couldn't figure out what it was, and I was trying to find, it was, one of them was pretty close to my boat, where my boat was sitting on the edge of the river. And I was trying to get my camera to record the audio of it. And I rustled around a little too much and scared scared one of them. But when I got up this morning, I searched the sounds that a uh, river otters make. And that's, that's what it was. It was a family of river otters. Um, you had a lower... Uh, I'll see if I can get the audio and put it in right here um, from a video uh, on YouTube or something, not one that I got because I didn't get one, unfortunately. But it was uh, it was an odd sound, and I'd never never heard that before, and I thought, well, about the only thing I've never heard up through here would be river otters. So I looked up river otters this morning, and, and sure enough, that's what it was. So that was really cool. And then when we got up this morning, there's, excuse me, there's shells left on top of logs out in the water out here where they were feeding out here in front of us last night. Yeah, the, the majority of the, the otters were straight in line between me and Glendon. And I was thinking, what in the devil is he doing over there? You know, <laughs> it, it was it was a strange sound. It was just kind of off and on, off and on. And, I, and I'm like, do, do I need to get up and see if he's in distress or something? <laughs> is, he, uh, is he choking? Is he dying? Yeah. What? It was a, a really, of course, at night in a, you know, in a hammock where you can't see out unless you raise up, you know, and look over the top like, you know, Kilroy was here. Uh, you don't see anything. You just hear strange sounds, you know, and, and we do. We have armadillos come through. We have all kinds of animals come through, uh, and I'm sure a lot of them we don't see. That's why we need a good game, Kim, yep. uh, to, to put up, you know, two or three, uh, so we can say, well, look what comes through in, in the middle of the night. Only thing is, we need, like Josh said, we need to be sure and designate where we point the cameras and designate a bathroom so that people getting up in the middle of the night don't walk right over in front of the camera and take care of their business. Because <laughs> that's something I would do. I don't know if y'all know this about me. I would totally unintentionally do that. All right. Yeah, Brad is a bit of an exhibitionist. Oh, we've discussed this on the on the, a on the pod. He's an accidental exhibitionist on the podcast. <laughs> By the way, we are camping right now at the same spot where I had walked downstream to take a water bottle bath. We talked about it in a previous episode, and I was standing there buck naked, and I hear giggling and look up, and there's a whole family sitting on a bridge that in getting out of their van, uh, crossing the river just downstream of me. Um, but fortunately, <laughs> on this trip, the trees have grown enough that they've covered up the bridge, and you can't even see it from, from the uh, downstream. Yeah, you so. cannot see it no more. Mm -mm. <clears throat> so, all right. Anybody else got anything to add? Well, Lord and mercy, we you know we had two days of of, of this, and uh, now. One thing's for sure, we are, we're consistent. Uh, we can have consistently good trips, you know, that, you know, we wouldn't have thought would have turned out good. Uh, and you know the motto, uh, you can put that in here. Yeah, uh, even bad adventures make great stories. Yeah. They sure do. So, and we got a few of those. 
And it seems like we are real consistent about breaking camp and getting on the water at almost exactly the same time every day, every trip. No matter what we do. No and matter we how early time. we get up. Yeah. If yeah. we rush. So it's about time to hit the water. It is currently 8.21 a.m. and we got to be on the water by 8.30. <laughs> We, yeah, we got to stay consistent. Stay consistent. Yep. Anything to add, Glendon? No. Nah, Josh? I, I'm good. I'm good. All right. We'll holler at y'all later. Uh, let's see. All right, folks. Thanks for tuning in for this episode of Pine Thicket Philosophies. Tune in next time as we continue to live by our motto, even bad adventures make great stories.